You're listening to the weekly Bible lesson from the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, Plainfield, New Jersey, the United States of America. This is the lesson for Sunday, June 9, 2024. Subject, God, the only cause and creator. The golden text is from Proverbs. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. The responsive reading is from Psalms. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. I will read from the Bible. Genesis In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. Isaiah I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their host have I commanded. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it, he created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Hosea When Israel was a child, then I loved him, and called my son out of Egypt. Exodus now the sojourning of the children of Israel, who dwelt in Egypt, was four hundred and thirty years. Moses said unto the people, Remember this day, in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed 
out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he took six hundred chosen chariots, all the chariots of Egypt, and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more for ever. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued, and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And the waters returned, and covered the chariots, and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand, and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Hosea The number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Isaiah 
Thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I shall read correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. Creator, Spirit, Mind, Intelligence, the animating divine principle of all that is real and good, self-existent life, truth, and love, that which is perfect and eternal, the opposite of matter and evil, which have no principle, God, who made all that was made and could not create an atom or an element the opposite of himself. The creative principle Life, truth, and love is God. The universe reflects God. There is but one creator and one creation. This creation consists of the unfolding of spiritual ideas and their identities, which are embraced in the infinite mind and forever reflected. These ideas range from the infinitesimal to infinity, and the highest ideas are the sons and daughters of God. Genesis 1, 27 So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. To emphasize this momentous thought, it is repeated that God made man in his own image to reflect the divine spirit. It follows that man is a generic term. Masculine, feminine, and neuter genders are human concepts. In one of the ancient languages, the word for man is used also as the synonym of mind. This definition has been weakened by anthropomorphism, or a humanization of deity. The word anthropomorphic, in such a phrase as an anthropomorphic god, is derived from two Greek words signifying man and form, and may be defined as a mortally mental attempt to reduce deity to corporeality. The life-giving quality of mind is spirit, not matter. The ideal man corresponds to creation, to intelligence, and to truth. The ideal woman corresponds to life and to love. God is the creator of man, and the divine principle of man remaining perfect, the divine idea or reflection, man, remains perfect. Man is the expression of God's being. If there ever was a moment 
when man did not express the divine perfection, then there was a moment when man did not express God, and consequently a time when deity was unexpressed, that is, without entity. The relations of God and man, divine principle and idea, are indestructible in science, and science knows no lapse from nor return to harmony, but holds the divine order or spiritual law in which God and all that he creates are perfect and eternal to have remained unchanged in its eternal history. Father, Mother is the name for deity, which indicates his tender relationship to his spiritual creation. As the Apostle expressed it in words which he quoted with approbation from a classic poet, for we are also his offspring. In the science of Genesis we read, that he saw everything which he had made, and behold, it was very good. The corporeal senses declare otherwise, and if we give the same heed to the history of error as to the records of truth, the scriptural record of sin and death favors the false conclusion of the material senses. Sin, sickness, and death must be deemed as devoid of reality as they are of good, God. The foundation of mortal discord is a false sense of man's origin. To begin rightly, is to end rightly. Every concept which seems to begin with the brain begins falsely. Divine mind is the only cause or principle of existence. Cause does not exist in matter, in mortal mind, or in physical forms. Mortals are egotists. They believe themselves to be independent workers, personal authors, and even privileged originators of something which deity would not or could not create. The creations of mortal mind are material. Immortal, spiritual man alone represents the truth of creation. When mortal man blends his thoughts of existence with the spiritual and works only as God works, he will no longer grope in the dark and cling to earth because he has not tasted heaven. Carnal beliefs defraud us they make man an involuntary hypocrite, producing evil when he would create good, forming deformity when he would outline grace and beauty, injuring those whom he would bless. He becomes a general miscreator who believes he is a semi-god. His touch turns hope to dust, the dust we all have trod. He might say in Bible language, the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. There can be but one creator who has created all. In the Saxon and twenty other tongues, good is the term for God. The scriptures declare all that he made to be good, like himself, 
good in principle and in idea. Therefore, the spiritual universe is good and reflects God as he is. God's thoughts are perfect and eternal, are substance and life. Material and temporal thoughts are human, involving error. And since God, Spirit, is the only cause, they lack a divine cause. The temporal and material are not then creations of spirit. They are but counterfeits of the spiritual and eternal. Christian science presents unfoldment, not accretion. It manifests no material growth from molecule to mind, but an impartation of the divine mind to man and the universe. Proportionately as human generation ceases, the unbroken links of eternal harmonious being will be spiritually discerned. And man, not of the earth earthly, but coexistent with God, will appear. The scientific fact that man and the universe are evolved from spirit, and so are spiritual, is as fixed in divine science as is the proof that mortals gain the sense of health only as they lose the sense of sin and disease. Mortals can never understand God's creation while believing that man is a creator. God's children already created will be cognized only as man finds the truth of being. Thus it is that the real, ideal man appears in proportion as the false and material disappears. No longer to marry, or to be given in marriage, neither closes man's continuity, nor his sense of increasing number in God's infinite plan. Spiritually to understand that there is but one Creator, God, unfolds all creation, confirms the Scriptures, brings the sweet assurance of no parting, no pain, and of man deathless and perfect and eternal. I will now read the three daily duties as given by Mary Baker Eddy in the Church Manual. Daily Prayer It shall be the duty of every member of this church to pray each day. Thy kingdom come. Let the reign of divine truth, life, and love be established in me, and rule out of me all sin. And may thy word enrich the affections of all mankind and govern them. A Rule for Motives and Acts Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, Divine love alone governs man. And a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil from prophesying, judging, condemning, 
counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. Alertness to duty. It shall be the duty of every member of this church to defend himself daily against aggressive mental suggestion and not be made to forget nor to neglect his duty to God, to his leader, and to mankind. By his works he shall be judged and justified or condemned. And from Science and Health, Christian Scientists, be a law to yourselves that mental malpractice cannot harm you, either when asleep or when awake. This lesson sermon has been prepared by the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. It is comprised of citations from the King James Bible and correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, 1910 edition, by Mary Baker Eddy. For more information, please visit our website, plainfieldcs.com. Thank you for listening and have a blessed day.